Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Ala Radley. And I'm Rosie Rodriguez. The rain is expected to hit Southern California hard this weekend. California has been suffering from a historic drought. Governor Brown announced a $687 million plan to provide immediate assistance to communities without water. Today, CSUN students can walk throughout the campus at a comfortable 67 degrees, but tomorrow, everybody will need a raincoat. Students are staying indoors to avoid the cold weather. Friday and Saturday will bring heavy showers. This storm is expected to deliver the largest rainfall since the spring of 2011. CSUN students say they're not worried about the rain. I personally don't mind it, but I feel like since it's L.A., it's kind of it's going to be tough for L.A. drivers since they're not used to this type of weather. Elwood, it's L.A. without the traffic, so I guess it's something you got to deal with, but I don't think anybody in L.A. likes the traffic. I think the roads are actually going to be really bad because there's been a lot of crazy drivers around recently, and with the weather, they're probably not going to really care. They're probably going to go really fast, so it's going to be really dangerous. The rain is expected to begin tonight. CSUN students will be offering free federal and state income tax assistance to low-income households. Students will be helping the community through the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, also known on campus as VITA. Many of the volunteers are accounting majors. All students undergo tax preparation training before being sent out to the public and are also overseen by veteran staff. VITA will also provide tax assistance to senior citizens, non-English speakers, and the disabled. For more information on this program, visit www.csun.edu slash VITA. Police are still investigating the death of a pedestrian on the northbound 405 freeway. The man was allegedly walking on the freeway. The accident was reported earlier this morning. Police have closed all lanes but one for investigation. The closure caused traffic to back up past Wilshire Boulevard. There is still no explanation as to why the man was walking on the overpass. A Northern California couple finds gold in their own yard. They say they were out walking their dog when they found $10 million worth of gold coins. The coins were in mint condition and were buried under a tree. They date back from the mid to late 1800s. A coin expert hired to represent the couple says they want to avoid a new gold rush to their property and wish to remain anonymous. They plan to sell most of the coins on Amazon and use the money to pay bills and make donations to local charities. Tensions continue to rise in Venezuela as opposition leaders push for demonstrators to stay in the streets. The country's violent crime rate and the falling economy triggered the protests earlier this month. CSUN Spanish professor Elias Ramos says in his January visit to Venezuela, he expected students were going to take action. Something big was coming. A, um, a social explosion in which the young people had taken the streets of Venezuela peacefully, peacefully, and this is one of the main uh, um, goals, you know, of this movement, peacefully against a government that is intending to um, remain in power under any cause, okay? even if they had to kill the people like they have done. Thirteen people have died and at least 147 people have been injured in clashes since the demonstrations began. Both opposition leaders and government officials blame each other for the unrest. Beijing is under an orange smog alert, the first time the second highest warning level has been used. The people of Beijing are choking as the smog hit heavily near the capital. The problems with the air have prompted officials to consider ways to protect their citizens from pollution. Many are trying to protect themselves by wearing face masks. The International School of Beijing built two $9 million domes that are enclosed to the outdoor areas, allowing students to play in smog-free air. The smog is expected to ease towards the end of the week. Former Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych is wanted for the mass killings of civilians. Despite success in pushing Yanukovych out of office, protesters are still demonstrating in Ukraine's main square, waving what is known now to them as the revolution flag. Yanukovych fled the country's capital over the weekend after his powers were stripped by a vote in the Ukrainian parliament. Acting Interior Minister Arsen Avakov issued an arrest warrant for the fugitive president on allegations he ordered the killings of protesters in Kiev last week. Yanukovych's whereabouts remain unclear. 
Mexican drug lord Joaquin Guzman, also known as El Chapo, has to face charges in Mexico, including six pending criminal cases before any possibility of extradition to the U.S. Guzman, leader of the Sinaloa cartel, is allegedly responsible for trafficking billions of dollars worth of cocaine, methamphetamine and heroin in Mexico and 54 other countries. Guzman was captured Saturday. Mexican officials say Guzman will be held on its highest security prison and will not have any chance of escaping the way that he did last time when he was captured in 2001. On the heels of Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel's proposal to shrink the army, President Obama says he plans to pull all troops out of Afghanistan by the end of this year. He says he's growing impatient with Afghan, with Afghan President Hamid Karzai's refusal to sign a security agreement. Obama has asked the Pentagon to make sure an orderly withdrawal takes place should the decision be finalized. But a senior Pakistani official warned that a complete withdrawal could lead to a civil war. The as-yet unsigned security agreement would keep thousands of American troops in Afghanistan. A new study says obesity in toddlers is decreasing. Mahina Haina has the story. A new study is showing a decline in obesity in toddlers and young children. Children 2 through 5 have had a 40% decline in obesity in the, de in the last decade. Experts are optimistic about the change, but believe more can still be done to fight the high percentage of obesity among teenagers and adults. But studies show if children start living healthier at an earlier age, obesity will be curbed. First Lady Obama's Let's Move program, children help benefit that teaches them about healthier eating habits. Healthy living awareness seems to be the best way to prevent obesity. A rare disease has appeared in more than a dozen California children within the past year. Stanford University researchers say a, the polio-like disease has children suffering from paralysis in both arms and legs. Parents say they fear experts won't find a cure to save their babies. As we were leaving that, um appointment, Sophia went to the treasure box to, to grab her toy after seeing the doctor, and I saw her left hand mid-grasp stop working. The illness appears to be very unusual, and the cause has not been identified. Stanford doctors say children showing weakness in their limbs or symptoms of paralysis should immediately be seen by a doctor. The doctor says the illness is not the same as polio, but is still very serious. So far, the infected children appear not to be recovering the use of their arms or legs. Medicare Advantage plans may face reduction next year. The Obama administration says cuts are already decided. The political decision is affecting the insurance alternative highly popular with seniors. The ammunition gave new ammunition to Republican critics of o President Obama's health care law. Democratic senators say they are disappointed because they wanted to hold rates steady. And now back to you, Allah. And now business. And now business news on the General Motors recall with Lauren Lanos. Thank you, Allah. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating if General Motors was slow to report problems leading to 13 deaths and a massive recall of small cars. The federal agency has the authority to fine the company. $35 million for not telling the public about the problem soon enough. General Motors expanded its recall yesterday to fix the faulty ignition switches that have been linked to multiple fatal crashes. General Motors issued an apology, saying its process to examine the problem was not strong enough. Target will be experiencing the financial effects for a while after December's theft of credit card numbers and other information of millions of customers. Target says its fourth quarter profit went down 46 percent during the holiday shopping season. Millions of Target customers got their information stolen when using credit cards. Apparently, hackers targeted credit card terminals in the store. The incident has scared customers away from shopping at Target. The corporation says its profit will be affected this year. Stocks are moving higher today as investors are crunching numbers that suggest strong housing data and a high earnings report. The housing market is definitely looking up as sales of new homes jumped in January at its fastest pace in more than five years. This means good news for home builders and home sellers. As the housing market is recovering, home improvement stores like Lowe's are also doing well as the company reported its net income rose 6% in the most recent quarter. At last check, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up nearly 13 points. The Standard & Poor's 
500 is down around one point and the NASDAQ is up a little over one point. And that will do it for business news. Back to you, Rosie. Thank you, Lauren. And now back to Mahina on NBA star Jason Collins with sports news. Jason Collins, the seven-foot center for the Brooklyn Nets, is making history. It wasn't because of his two rebounds and his scoreless game, but because he became the first openly gay, gay player to play an American pro sporting game. Collins says there has been positive reaction to his personal life from teammates, friends, and family. He is looking forward to more playing time and being on the court. His jersey number, 98, hit the number one seller on the NBAstore.com this week. The Nets' next game against Portland Trailblazers is on Wednesday in Portland. An anti-gay legislation could cost Arizona the hosting spot for the 2015 Super Bowl. A conservative advocacy group and a Christian legal organization are pushing for the Senate Bill 1062. The bill would allow businesses to cite religious beliefs in refusing service to gay people and others. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer has until Saturday to decide if she will sign the bill. The Arizona Super Bowl host committee has joined many groups against the bill. The NFL says they have no comment as of now, but are accepting of all people and will monitor the situation as it unfolds. Ducks defensive man Cam Fowler is back at the Hana Center after being in Soji for the Olympics. Fowler, the USA and the USA team didn't medal this year but the USA team lost in the semifinals to gold medaling Canadian team and went on to lose the bronze medal match to Russia. But Fowler says he was enriched by his first experience at the games and had a great time even though he came home empty-handed. The Ducks enter the post-Olympic play with the most points in the NHL. And that's it for sports. Back to you, Ala. And now back to Lauren with entertainment news. Thank you, Ala. ABC's Dancing with the Stars has turned over the hosting reins from Brooke Burke Charvet to Fox's own Aaron Andrews in an attempt to gain more male viewers. The hosting change came unexpectedly over the weekend. Seven season veteran Burke Charvet wasn't told about the decision until a few hours before it went public. Andrews plans to continue to work for both Fox Sports and ABC. Her co hosting debut will be on March 17th when Dancing with the Stars returns for its 18th season. The movie award show season is finally coming to an end this Sunday with the 86th annual Academy Awards. And that means endless critic predictions of who will be victorious. The Best Actor nominees are getting a lot of buzz, specifically between Dallas Buyers Club Matthew McConaughey and Wolf of Wall Street's Leonardo DiCaprio. For Best Actress, critics say Kate Blanchett in Blue Jasmine is a shoo-in for her portrayal of a modern-day Blanche Dubois, even against fellow veteran contenders Amy Adams, Meryl Streep, Sandra Bullock, and Judi Dench. Critics say 12 Years a Slave should win the coveted Best Picture Award, but American Hustle or Gravity may steal the crown. CSUN students have mixed reviews for why they will be tuning this in this weekend. Not so much movies, but I know I want Leonardo DiCaprio to finally win an Oscar. Um, watching all the celebrities and what they're wearing this year. I just, I'm not into it. I'm not really watching Oscar yet. I'm just busy with my school stuff, yeah. Probably the performances and being able to see who gets what awards. I am looking forward to seeing it, but I do have to educate myself a little bit because I haven't not ready for my Oscar pool or anything yet this year. The awards show ceremony, hosted by Ellen DeGeneres, will air this Sunday night on ABC. Paula Dean is back in the spotlight, but this time in an effort to make a comeback. The scandal-plagued celebrity chef is planning a $20 million restaurant in Tennessee, next to none other than Dolly Parton's Dollywood theme park. The new business, Paula Dean's Family Kitchen, is scheduled to open in late summer and is the first endeavor under her new firm, Paula Dean Ventures. The company aims to capitalize on Dean's still loyal fan base, even after her racist remarks were made public. And now, back to Ala and Rosie. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Ala Ravi. And I'm Rosie Rodriguez. Have a great day.